Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to talk about the MVC architecture and how to install Kerrigorm in Flex 3. Now, the MVC model it stands for Model, Viewer, and Controller, and the model encapsulates information from the database or an XML file. The view or the viewer is the presentation layer. It's what the user interacts with, what they see. And the controller processes and responds to events and evokes changes to the model and the viewer. Now, the way we used to do it, and I got this graphic from Lynda.com. Let me go ahead and plug Lynda real quick. Lynda.com is a great video tutorial uh, service out there. You pay for it. And uh, they have tons of uh, super, super, super um, tutorials on various video products, spe specifically uh, Adobe products. Now, I got this graphic from Lynda.com, and uh, it tells you basically the way we usually do things on the web. We have a browser that interacts with a viewer, and that viewer could be Flex, or it could be an HTML page, or a Java uh, script page, and it interacts with a database and passes information back and forth between the, the data and the browser. And uh, that's great for, like, small web pages. No problem with doing it that way. But when you get larger and you, you, you build more robust systems and you go uh, on an enterprise level, level you actually want a better a way of doing things, and the MVC architecture definitely is a better way of doing things. It consists of a controller, a viewer, and a model. So the browser will interact with the controller, and the controller will pass information back and forth to the model. And that model basically will uh, grab information from a database, pass it back to the controller, and then send information to the viewer, which essentially will go back to the browser. So it seems somewhat complicated, but we're actually going to kind of break the code today and install uh, Cairngorm, which is an MVC model, and uh, then begin writing Cairngorm programs. Now let's go ahead and show you how to download Cairngorm and get it working in Flex 3. Very easy to do. You can find Cairngorm on the following website, labs.adobe.com forward slash wiki forward slash index.php forward slash Cairngorm colon Cairngorm 2.2 colon download. So let's go there right now and grab Cairngorm. So when you go to the download site here, Cairngorm 2.2, uh, you actually have two choices, uh, the binary or the source. Now the source is basically all the class files, and I really love this because you can go in there and change the class files. But for us, we're just going to grab the binary, the SWIC file, and I'm going to show you how to install that into Flex3. And Flex3 has made it really easy to um, install SWIC files. So let's click on the binary. You will go ahead and save this to your desktop or wherever you save your files. Okay, and I've already saved it, so there you go. Then you want to unzip it. So once you've downloaded the Cairngorm zip, let's unzip it real quick. You have a bin folder. Inside that bin folder, you have a SWIC file. And that's really all you need to install this into Flex3. Let's copy that SWIC file. Let's open up Flex3 and install it. So we're going to go to uh, Flex3, and we're going to create a new project. So click on New. And let's just call it uh, Karen Gorm Test. And hit Finish. And Adobe Flex has made it really easy to install SWIC files. All you have to do is drop them into the library file. So here's the library's file. And just right click and paste the uh, SWIC file in there. And you can see there it is. And I don't even have to set the path because it's set automatically. If I put any SWIC file in the library, I have that path. So there you go. Cairngorm installed. That's all there is to it. Isn't that fantastic? I love it when Adobe makes things so easy. So let's go and talk about Cairngorm just a little bit more, and then we're going to finish up. So you may be asking, hey, Mike, why are you interested in Cairngorm in anyway? And so I'm actually interested in two different types of technology. I've been looking at Ruby on Rails and Cairngorm. And one of the problems with Flex is that the components don't easily talk to each other. If you're walk, working with small applications, that's great. But as your application grows and becomes more robust, you need a way of basically centralizing or putting all the data in, in a central place. And that's many times what's called dry. Dry in Ruby on Rails means that the data only occurs once. And so we're going to use what's called a model locator. And it is a centralized repository for all the data that is needed across your application. Your data will exist inside a singleton class. The class can only have one instance of itself. Now, there's a great place to go to the web to get some great tutorials, video tutorials on Cairngorm, and that is David Tucker's blog. So let's go to his blog real quick. 
And David Tucker has released five videos on the web, and uh, they will, which basically do a great job explaining the basics of Cairngorm. I'm going to go to the Cairngorm part one, since we'll be using uh, this uh, during this tutorial series. And this is basically getting started, and he talks about that single in class and goes through it through great detail. We'll basically be copying this code and applying it to a more advanced example. And he actually uh, does a video tutorial, so click on that and watch that video. And then there's a download, so you can actually download the source code and get it running in your Adobe Flex project. I've actually done that. I've got one of his projects running in uh, Flex right now, so let's take a look at that project. So I'm in Flex 3 right now. I'm going to demonstrate one of uh, David Tucker's first examples. We called it test application here. Let's go ahead and run that. And it's a real simple example, but it illustrates Karen Gorm really great. I'm going to come along here and type in my name, lively, person last, and just add a person. And it sends the information from uh, basically these, uh, this component, which basically is a, an entry component, to uh, a list. Architecture. So let's go ahead and, and uh, show you how the uh, program was constructed. Uh, in the org.flexhacks.caringorm test, this is my, there is a model and there's views. Now the model is a singleton class. So if you click on that, you'll, you'll, you'll see the class and we'll be using this in further examples and go to David Tucker's site and he basically explains this line by line. And uh, it, we have the views and these are separate components. And you can see that was the one component where you have the name entry and the other component is the list component, basically where the lists are added. And each one of these components have uh, two sets of lines in them, which is called, which imports the Cairngorm um, model locator. So all the data is treated centrally. And the other one, add por person, you go back and you see once again that imports the uh, sample model locator. Great. And so all that data is treated centrally. And then if we go back to our test application, see once again the same lines, the uh, import test.model.sample model locator is there. And uh, basically all that data is handled by that import statement. So, and it's, it's, it's really a great architecture and it allows you to go more robust. And we're definitely going to be uh, using this in the future on a number of applications that we're working on. I had a problem with the Yahoo Maps application where uh, basically uh, data was not being transferred very easy between components. So I came along here. I'm going to adapt the Cairngorm uh, architecture to do that. To that.